My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am President and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hi, I'm Siwafili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today I have a great guest with me. I have Roberto, let me say it correctly, Tinoco. That's right. Duran. Welcome to the show. Good to be here. First time. I've been looking forward to you coming on the show. You're a poet and a vocalist. Yes, author, poet, vocalist. And you have published several books. And I've seen some of them over the years, but how many have you published? Well, uh, my first book was, uh, was self-published in 1980 when it came out of Soledad uh, University, Soledad State University. Uh -huh. uh, after that, I got published by Bilingual Press at Tempe, Arizona State, two books, uh, 1987, Triple Crown, along with two other authors, La Cubana and Portriquena, respectively, Judith and uh, Gustavo. Here they are. And in 1987, so in 1993, Reality Ribs was published by the same press, Bilingual Press. And my latest book is called Maximum and Minimum. Uh, it just came out this year. So. Oh, that came out this year. Yes. Oh, how exciting. And you're going to be reading some poetry yes. to us a little bit some later. Some selections from the three. Right. Oh, wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. But you, these are just three that you brought. You've had six published uh, already? Three other books. But Wow. Yeah. Three other books. That's, that's pretty impressive. And anthologies impressive. and journals, periodicals. Uh, throughout the United States and abroad. Uh, Have you traveled uh, giving your poetry or I, what is your experience Well, yeah, I've been that? to New York several times. I've done major festivals there. Uh, Cornell University used my book, this one, Triple Crown is a text in a curriculum at Cornell. Really? Yeah. yeah wow. So I, I, that was exciting. Yeah. That's for sure. So now you you have your books, you're working on a documentary, and it's a documentary of your life. I'm very fortunate, very blessed to have Bill Cazzini, who's also a poet, fine poet from San Jose, who uh, came to one of my readings and then I got an email and he said, I, I want to do a biography, a uh, documentary on, on your work. And I, oh, really? Oh, okay. I've heard that before, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Lo and behold, the documentary is finished and has been submitted uh, already to CineQuest. And it's going to have my music, my poetry, my art. For those of you that don't know, uh, I do art also. You're an artist. Visual too. art. And uh, so I'm real excited. Real excited. And it's called Jaguar Poet. The Jaguar Poet. The Jaguar Poet. Yeah. I think you brought us a clip of it or a trailer yeah, of it. I hope you have it. Yeah, we sent it. <laughs> I, I'm anxious to see it, so let's take a look at that. All right. Have you ever been insulted by strangers in blue? It was uh, talking about social issues and it kind of blew everybody away. 
that was been a like primeval force. To attack or hold back. So he's kind of like one of our favorite sons. Where do acrobats walk? After having fallen once too many times. I mean, any creative genius, you can't do the same thing over and over again. You have to go and do something different. Swimming. We produced the six videos. Who's at the Oz? Oh, hail to the chief. There's nothing about him that you can call. Yeah. You have no idea what he's going to do next or what he's going to say. Have you ever been pushed in blood splattered rooms? He knows he's a rare bird in flight. Perched atop. And just what kind of Indian are you anyway? And without reservation, I answer. That's what it all comes down to. He set himself apart. Some people, like Sandra, they leave a legacy. Other people, they just leave their name a sea. <laughs>
That's the piece. And I know you're going to read one of your pieces on Standing Rock. Yes, yes, and I did read I'm, something for Standing Rock. Yeah. And um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been in, well, it really hasn't been in the news. It's been in our news, mm -hmm. in our circles, but it hasn't been in the general news. Mm -hmm. But I think little by little it's coming to light and um, for the general public, and they really should know what's going on at Standing Rock. And I, I did take a little peek at your poetry, <laughs> and I saw that, Good. and I thought, oh, I was very impressed by that. Thank you. So tell me a, a little bit about your life. Why would someone do a documentary about your life? That's a good question. I've been asked that already. <laughs> uh, Bill, uh, you know, in all honesty, uh, Bill is a poet, Bill Cusini, the producer of Cusini Arts, and I have known him for about 20 years plus around there, and so we have some history, and he's been following my career with, uh, for all these years, and he said, no, I think it's time that we, the people beyond San Jose, may know your work and because it says something it's worth it mm -hmm. and so he it, for two years he worked on this his own energy his own heart his own spirit his own financial uh, uh, help uh, uh, two years of his life you know. Wow. Uh, how do you repay that I can't uh, so I'm very very I'm just so happy I'm blessed for that. Yeah, I'm very, very blessed tell me about um, Maximum in minimum. Yes, maximum in Well, I, I'd rather read some pieces from there, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. Maximum in minimum. All right, here we go. The best way to honor the past is not to live in it. There was a lockdown in prison today. And your point is? There is no peace in peace officers. If one is from a third world country, by implication and insinuation, they're not from this world. The first world, per se, let alone the second world, hey, hey. <laughs> being a Chicano is like being a brown bipolar bear. La raza is not the world. However, the world is la raza. The Department of Homeland Insecurity should all be imprisoned for making terrorist threats. I'll stop right there. Wow, pretty heavy stuff Maximum there, minimum. huh? That's why it's called <laughs> maximum <laughs> and minimum. Now t let's talk about police brutality and about the peace. Oh boy, yeah. Or the lack of peace in peace officers. Tell me about that and tell me about being locked up for peacefully protesting? <sighs> no, no. Uh, I, I was protesting against police brutality s since the early 70s and I, I, they noticed it, and when the time came and there was a situation, there was a domestic s disturbance that police were called, and uh, nothing I started necessarily, but I happened to be in the neighborhood or in, in where it happened. As a result, uh, I got uh, in involved with the police. Uh, unfortunately, they were hurt, I was hurt, uh, and uh, I did four years for that. Oh my. I had a, I had a uh, clean record. Uh, well, let me preface with that. There is no such thing as a clean record. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but I've never been involved in terms of uh, uh, 
in crime or uh -huh. uh, probation, parole. I, I, I didn't have a record. I, uh, mm -hmm. So that gave me that. So uh, the reason I didn't do more time was because I was working, had a, you know, I had, uh, I had children, and uh, I was a good citizen, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but uh, all the years that I've seen police brutalize people, hurt them, and, and it just, just it's, you know, uh, treat them like less than human, it just came to a head, and I and just lost it. And so, oh, and I did four years in solid that state prison for that. I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of hurting it, uh, anyone. I was just trying to save a friend, and I did save his life. And I don't talk about it much, yeah, but yes, yeah. as a result of me interfering and getting involved and getting hurt too. Oh my goodness. Yeah. When did you start writing poetry? I think poetry started writing me, unbeknownst to me, because the, the, the reality is I don't like poetry. Well, I, I didn't like poetry. Okay. Uh, I didn't study poetry necessarily. Uh, it's something that came to me and I embraced it to the point where I started writing uh, and it just evolved from there. It was just a, a passion and then evolved and then eventually after that performance and then getting invited to colleges and doing workshops with students in, in the local high schools and junior highs and elementary schools in Santa Clara County. And so, yeah. Uh, but did you start at a young age or? No, no, I, uh, I, 1974 was my first collection of poetry and it was quite a fluke. Uh, I was behind on a term paper and I didn't have it ready and Dr. Maro Chavez, do you remember Dr. Yes, Maro Chavez? Do. He was my first teacher at Mexican American Culture at San Jose City College. And he says, well, Roberto, you, do you have your term paper ready to go? What term paper? He says, well, it's due tomorrow. I got it typed up. I uh, had, had help. And I typed it up. It was poems about police. What do you know? And he says, oh, great, great. Now you have to read it. So that was my first real writing or real performance, or I would say performance, but actually reading the words on the page. And I kept going from there. That was in 74. Dr. Mauro yeah, Chavez, yeah. he was a great friend of he mine. Was my, uh, he was my, he also wrote a burb, I have to say this, and oh, it's did? right here, Dr. Oh, Mauro Chavez. If you'd like to read it, the burb, if you don't mind. Oh, I think gosh, <laughs> well, it's here. Anyway, Dr. Mauro Chavez, That's I'm proud of this. So I, oh, I yeah. show it's it off every time I can get. What a person he is. Yes. Was. So. Miss him dearly. Oh, that is something. Okay, well, I want to hear some more of your poetry. You know, I'm listening to it, and of course, some of them, it really makes you chuckle because it's so true. Humor it's so true. heals. It's important. Medicine. It's, yes. Uh, my, my poetry is very serious stuff. It's, you know, zero jive. We, you know, boom. Th there's, there's a lot behind it. But somewhere along the line, I don't know how it happened, the humor got in there, the satire, the irony of life, and it, and it, it was a meld. And so now, it's, it's, now I write this way. Mm -hmm. The style that uh, uh, was a poet from uh, New York, uh, Puerto Rico. His name was Jack Agueros. He passed away. Uh, he coined my poetry, and he coined it as Tinocoisms, Tinocoisms, <laughs> which is my last name, which comes from my grandpa. Uh, Jose Tinoco, who uh, was born in 1890 from uh, Purepecha, um, Purepecha, Michoacan in the mountains, and uh, that's where I get uh, that blood from. And uh, of course, my dad, uh, El Paso, uh, El Chato from El Paso, you know, I'm Chicano, so I got the mix, of course, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. I love your poetry. Let's hear some more. Okay, uh, I, I want to read Standing Rock, eh? Hey? I'd love to hear it. When will we understand and know it's impossible for man to stand on moral ground? When he disgraces, reprimands the people and the land, water, life, the blood in sand, from sea to shining sea. Standing Rock, dedication to it. That's beautiful, you know. I, w I was looking at that, and the last C is S-E-E. -E. Yes, C. the last C. Play on words, of mm -hmm. course, but I'm not playing. 
Yeah, yes. we're not playing. <laughs> uh, I have a poem here that it's, it's rather long. I usually don't read long pieces, but it's called Big Mountain. I, was, uh, I had the pleasure of going to, with the Veterans Peace Action Team uh, on a humanitarian mission from La Paz, California, where Cesar Chavez mm -hmm. gave us the benediction. And I traveled with them in a caravan of, I don't know, a dozen vehicles or more, with food and clothing that we brought to the Diné. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I wanted to read that. In the land of Big Mountain, the elders speak softly, almost in whispers, what their heavy hearts scream. From Yamaha speakers, we heard that the Japanese want to buy the land, the coal from beneath Big Mountain, from people whose eyes are oval also. In the elders' eyes lies a horror, progress from the crimson horizon, far removed from the linear thinking of corporate America. In the elders' eyes, there is only one way, for even the white of clouds form designs to honor the land, being born of the land, the snow of big mountain, there is no translation necessary in the translation of tears from daughter, to mother, being born of the land, the sacred pipe, the sacred smoke, the sacred songs of stretched skins chanting to indifferent eardrums of an indifferent government shall go on forever. The sage, the age of elders, are not of the combine, but together we shall know the combination by opening our hearts to pipes melodies where the blood of humans is warmed, where the tears have no recourse as they fall back to the earth in remembrance and honor to the land. When the drums sound, they echo through pores and the blood and sweat, for in the heart flows only one color, Big Mountain. That's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, there's uh, one I have to read. Okay. It's for my mom, dedicated to my mother, Guadalupe, 1922 to 2005. She worked in the cannery, Del Monte, infamous or famous, whatever you want to mm -hmm. say. And it goes thus. Even after a generation of faithful service to the Valley Cannery, Del Monte, Santa Clara County, you will not see the tired faces of valley women grace the luxury hotel. You will not see their fruit being brought to them on the finest silver trays. There will be no black tie party or flowing silk gowns. And the champagne will not sparkle after a generation of faithful service to the valley cannery where worn women sneak fruit out tucked conspicuously under stained aprons and arthritic bones. We're just a couple of miles away. The downtown skyline defines their lines from the valley of the continuous can. Mom. Okay. That's beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. That, that. Valley of the heart, huh? Valley of heart's delight. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yes. That's true. Do you have anything on Leonard Peltier? Huh? Anything on Leonard Peltier? I, I did do something for him in, in form of dedication uh, for the, the at, at Mexican Heritage Plaza mm -hmm. uh, with Donna Wallach, and she's mm -hmm. been gracious enough to invite me to, to do the, um, the fundraising and also an awareness uh, every few months. And I've been part of that for maybe a couple of years, and I, I did. I do have something for Leonard Peltier, but I, and it also in coinc uh, coincidence with my brother David, because he died in prison and Leonard's in prison. Uh, I don't have anything here, but perhaps another time I, I, I'll do some more for him. Oh, I'd for love him. to hear something, yes. And I know you... you uh, I have written about, yes, about Leonard. And Donna does mm -hmm. fundraisers for Le Leonard as long as I've known her. Yes, and, and she's she still doing it. works on our camera crew here. <laughs> so she is dynamite. She is. Dynamite. And her sister, too. That's right. There's, There's two, two of them. them. <laughs> we both two. said that's two There's of two them. There's two of them. Okay, could you read us a uh, couple more Well, I, I uh, yes. Maybe some more. I would love to hear it. It's just beautiful. Uh, so you'll know when I'm done because I'm going to pause, right? I've been doing that. So 
I don't usually use titles for my, my work. I don't title my work but because it's unnecessary, really. Uh, the poetry is not in the title or in the print. The poetry is in the white space. It's in the pause. It's in, that's where the poetry really is. So that's why I don't title my work. Dry's editor is crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. High-end thrift stores confuse me. <laughs> All right already. Give it a rest. Does it really matter if Hispanics, Latinos use Colgate or Crest? <laughs> Look, a school of fish. <laughs> clean coal, coal, clean. <laughs> Don't worry about martial arts. Worry about martial law. I am not a religious type or font. <laughs> okay, I, 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 have, I need to do this one. Uh, a bomb blast for a Torah, Bible, or Koran. In God's name, alas, is a blast for me. Thank you. Those yes. Are, yes, a beautiful, beautiful work. Thank I want to thank you for thank coming thank on the so show. Much. Thank you. We're going to have to bring you back when um, your documentary comes out oh. so we can talk about that. Yes. So and sure. Bill? Yes, Better absolutely. Bring Bill? Yes, we will okay. bring Bill. We need to talk to Bill. Fantastic individual. Cuisini. I'm plugging him. Cuisini. Yeah. Thank Cuisini you. Arts. All right. Well, thank you for being thank here. Thank you, Rose. Thank you for joining us, Native Voice TV. Like us on Facebook. I always tell you that. We'll have pictures of the set today. But you'll see our show soon. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you.